be sure to follow me on Instagram. There you can hang out with me and talk to me directly. As you guys can see, I have a uh, visitor behind me. <laughs> I have a visitor here. Okay, we get to keep her. Right? It's been 14 days since she showed up on our back door and, and we get to keep her now. For those of you guys who don't know, um, I, like Mariah was streaming on Twitch, right? On uh, on Ecodes where she does her cooking and she cooks out of uh, video game themed cookbooks. She was finishing up her stream and like a cat just showed up on the back doorstep and we were just like, what? And uh, and it was kind of crazy because it was like, okay, well, this is, this is pretty awesome. So we took it to the Humane Society and it wasn't microchipped. And they were like, well, you have 14 days for the original owners to claim it. And if the original owners don't claim it, then it's yours. You, you can, you can have it. And 14 days passed two days ago, I think actually probably about four days ago. So like, it's been about 18 days. So she's officially ours now. And she is a hellion. <laughs> she's adorable, but she is a hellion at the same time, which by the way, I took my pre-workout and it's starting to kick in. So I'm probably going to be running like a million miles a minute in this video. Uh, just FYI, just so you guys know, Thanos created mutants, but not intentionally. Okay, so how does how does this work, right? Like, how does this theory work? Thanos basically creating mutants. How does all this come to a head? Okay, so in Marvel Comics, this is this this is gonna seem like a crazy theory, right? This, this is gonna seem absolutely absolutely bonkers. There is a kind of theory running around that's similar to this, except it's really based more on the Reality Stone and and essentially saying that like with Thanos doing what he did, it just you know reality was manipulated in such a way to where either he willed mutants into existence or they came into existence on their own. Uh, people just started developing X genes, different things like that. Like it just kind of modified their genes and, and sort of went forward from there. Um, this one's a little bit different, right? The idea behind this is that all this ties into the events of Operation Galactic Storm. So uh, so, so what is this? What's, what's Operation Galactic Storm? What's the basis behind this story? Well, as we know in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they love taking the idea of existing stories or names and then changing them into something else, but keeping the name the same, right? For example, the Russo brothers had made a statement at one point saying that there was no story in Marvel Comics called Endgame, right? That's not true. There's actually an X-Factor story called Endgame where uh, X-Factor and the Inhumans, I think, face off against the villain of Apocalypse or the villain Apocalypse in order to save the life of Nathan Summers, who goes on to become the character of Cable, right? So like, we know that story exists. And so just kind of applying that to an Avengers story and then going forward and calling it a day is what the Marvel Cinematic Universe likes to do. And so doing the same concept with Galactic Storm really makes sense. So Galactic Storm was a story that was written in Marvel Comics back in the day that centered on a war between the, the Kree race and the Shi'ar Empire. Now, you guys have heard of the Kree, right? You've seen Captain Marvel, you guys know what the Kree is. It's just a race out there that exists in the universe and it has this great big, huge expanding empire. The difference between the Shi'ar Empire and the Kree Empire, or even the Scroll Empire, is that the Shi'ar is not a singular race, right? It's a whole bunch of different races, all of whom swear allegiance to whoever's running the empire at the time. Uh, when the Shi'ar first popped up in Marvel, I wanna say it was Dekin, and then after Dekin, it was his sister Lalandra, and then after Lalandra, it, be it turned into maybe Warbird, Bird, I think, like like Lalandra's sister Warbird or whatever it was. Um, and then I think more recently it's been Gladiator. It's been Kellogg, right? You know, not Kellogg, not the cereal company. <laughs> But it's it was it was Kellark, uh, who was a Strontian, basically like Marvel's version of Superman, except that his powers are tied into his confidence. So the less confident he is, the less powerful he becomes. Uh, and so because of that, the Shi'ar really kind of stands alone in terms of the nature of its of its empire and how it functions. But the idea behind this was that at some point in the early days, or not really even in the early days, sometime in the past of the Kree Empire's existence, the Supreme Intelligence, which is kind of their religious leader slash you know combination of all the smartest minds that have ever existed in the Kree race, uh, had basically tasked one of their members to travel to a place called the Citadel of Light and Shadow. Now, the Citadel of Light and Shadow is home to a place called the Crystal of the Ultimate Vision. Sometimes it's called the Crystal of the Final Vision, but whatever it is, those individuals who were able to use the power of the crystal basically get like cosmic awareness and a vast amount of power, right? Like omnipotence, essentially. The idea behind this is you can't just walk in and take it, right? I mean, it's not a baseball sitting on the ground. You know, it's not like you go and you pick up the crystal and then horns blare and confetti falls and congratulations, you've achieved omnipotence. <laughs> Have fun. It doesn't, it doesn't really work that way, right? That's not how the crystal works. Instead, what it does is it, is it like gives you a whole bunch of different like tests, things like that. Just getting into the Citadel in and of itself is hard enough, let alone making your way through the Citadel and then finally getting to the crystal. But the final test of the crystal is what always ensnares people. It's what always catches people. And the reason why is because those individuals who know about the crystal of ultimate vision are, are really kind of entranced and they're drawn to it because of the power they could possess. And they could basically use it and say, I can do anything I want to. I can become God. And 
and their motivations are usually selfish in nature. These are either the motivations are based on like making their race all powerful or making themselves all powerful. And so what happens is when a person approaches the crystal and tries to grab it, the crystal will basically analyze their deepest desires. And if their desires are inherently selfish in nature, which is to say they want to use the crystal for their own personal goals, then the crystal will freeze the entire evolutionary process of their race, right? Like their race will never progress further along the evolutionary line. It'll stay exactly where it is. They can still procreate and they can still have kids, different things like that, but they'll never reach the, the next state, meaning that their, their lifespan is basically cut short, that eventually their entire race will die out before it should. Uh, those individuals who don't want to use the crystal for nefarious purposes, you don't want to use it for selfish purposes, you want to like help the universe or something along those lines, uh, ultimately they'd end up putting it back anyway, because it's just such an extreme amount of power, right? We saw that in the Uncanny X-Men story with Wolverine. When he got the crystal, he achieved like cosmic awareness. He was omnipotent for a short amount of time. And he's like, this is just too much power for one person to possess. I don't want this. And he ultimately put it back. Uh, ultimately, you know, when, when that happens, the crystal will kind of reward you of sorts with like, you know, cosmic awareness, uh, a short amount of omnipotence. And then of course it'll go back to, you know, being its being in its normal form. Uh, what ended up happening is this member of the Kree race took the crystal or at least tried to attain the crystal uh, with selfish intentions, right? Basically moving the Kree race to a point where it could become dominant. You know, it could, it could really kind of, uh, I guess, implement its dominion over the entirety of the universe. And the result was that the crystal of ultimate vision froze the evolutionary race of the Kree. That's why they hadn't really progressed or really changed at all. All that came to a head during Operation Galactic Storm. And during this story, the, the, the Kree initiated a war with the Shi'ar knowing that the Shi'ar would eventually detonate a Nega Bomb, right? The Nega Bomb is basically a bomb based off the Nega Bands, which essentially are like a, like a portal or, or kind of like a, a, a vector of sorts for antimatter energy. The long and short of it is that like, if you detonate them, like if you rip them open, it's an insane amount of power that would come out, right? And that was the nature behind the Nega Bomb, that when it was detonated, it was enough to wipe out an, an, an entire star system. And it did, right? Like, I mean, it, it literally destroyed billions of the Kree Empire. And uh, and it actually, I think it wiped out like 99% of the race or something along those lines. But the Supreme Intelligence was gambling on that. And the reason why is because when that happened, the natural response, the, the response of nature itself was to push the Kree into its next evolutionary state, right? It was basically say, okay, we're going to progress along the evolutionary chain. And the result is that the Kree have been, have been basically evolving ever since. What I'm saying is take that concept and apply it to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That when Thanos popped up and Thanos wiped out half the life in the universe, that of course half the life on Earth was gone. And the natural response of losing, you know, half its population was nature itself reacted. Basically just said like, genes are going to start manifesting now, right? And, and it's not even that, that, that genes appeared for the first time. They had always been there and they just started activating because of that, right? Because say for example, that what Marvel does is, is with the Eternals movie, they basically give us the end comic book origin of mutants through the Eternals film, right? Because for those of you guys who don't know, and, and we've talked about this a bunch of times before, so bear with me if you've heard this, but for those of you guys who don't know, basically when it comes to the Eternals, they're one of three groups, right? They're, it's, it's really kind of like a trifecta group. And the reason why is because in the early days, you had what were called the Wanderers. And the Wanderers were basically like the missing link between primate and modern man. And so what ended up happening is the Celestials visited Earth in the very early days, or really, not even the early days, like 30,000 years ago. So they were kind of, you know, it was it was relatively recently in comparison to like the entire history of the world. But uh, but they visited Earth about 30,000 years ago. And what they did is they took uh, this group called the Wanderers and they split them into thirds. One third basically had their genes modified to where they essentially became angelic in nature, right? Like they were like angels, right? They could fly, they could tap into cosmic energies, all kinds of cool stuff. And they were called the Eternals. The second group had their genes destabilized, meaning we didn't really know what the after effect or what the, what the ramifications of that was going to be. What ended up happening is they became really grotesque in nature, right? They were basically uh, like like monsters or, or troll looking things. And they, for the most part, resided underground. Uh, but they also had a half-life, meaning that every generation that came after lived shorter than the generation before it, had like a shorter lifespan than the generation before it. And then the third group had their genes modified so that somewhere along the line, those genes would manifest and then they would start developing powers, right? So it was basically an X gene, uh, which gave birth to, to mutants. Now, those, those genetic modifications were also used to explain why it is a Bruce Banner became the Incredible Hulk instead of like a giant mass of tumors. You know, why it is that Steve Rogers was able to essentially be blasted with like radiation and given, uh, given you know, the super soldier serum and become Captain America instead of like dying some horrendous death, you know, or something along those lines. And so uh, it was basically that these genes were modified in a way to where they would lend themselves to developing powers or develop powers outright through an X gene. And so what I'm saying is that if they decide to go with that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, then what it means is that since the Celestials had arrived on Earth and since the creation of the Eternals, the creation of the Deviants and the modification of, of baseline humans, these genes have been waiting to be activated is really all it is. Now you could go the ultimate universe route where, where it basically turns out that humans activate those
those genes and the activation process is synthesized and is spread throughout the world, then mutants pop up. Or they could go with this one in addition to a litany of others, but they could go with this one and basically say that when Thanos wiped out half the life in the universe, half the life on Earth was gone. And nature's reaction was to basically hit the panic button and say like, okay, push, and, and basically started activating all these genes. Uh, and in turn, like all these mutants started popping up all over the place. The question you have to ask here, and this is where things don't really make a whole lot of sense. The question you have to ask here is, is between the events of the end of Infinity War and the start of Avengers Endgame, we got five years. And so while we didn't really see a whole lot of what happened during that five year window, it was focused largely on the Avengers. The question is like, wouldn't we have seen some kind of reference to the fact that like mutants are among us or people with extraordinary abilities are popping up or something along those lines. They could not do that and just say like, that was all just focused on the Avengers. Now let's focus on that five year gap uh, that, that basically introduced uh, X-Men and mutants and so on, right? I mean, that's literally what you could do. You could do like an X-Men film and you could basically say X-Men 1 takes place in that five year window when half the life in the universe was wiped out, right? And like now that everybody's basically returned, uh, you know, half the population returns only to find out that like there's all these mutants around here now. Like nobody knows how to cope with them or anything along those lines. They're blamed for the fact that half the life in the universe is wiped out because, you know, I mean, a lot of people knew about Thanos, but they didn't really know the ins and outs of it in terms of like the Infinity Stones and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they kind of did, you know, as, as time went on, but, you know, they just referred to it as the blip. You know, even in Spider-Man Far From Home, the indication seemed to be that people didn't really know what it was that led to half the life in the universe or half the life on Earth being wiped out. They just know it got wiped out and then it came back, right? So if that's the case and, and most of humanity doesn't know what happened, then if mutants pop up, well, there's your reason for why humanity hates mutants because they believe the mutants were the ones who did it, right? Half the universe, half the life on, on the planet basically vanishes and then suddenly these people with superpowers start popping up. It's an easy scapegoat. So I don't know. I mean, there, there's a bunch of different options you can go with in terms of making this work and in terms of, 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 of putting this concept to use. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm kind of curious. You know, let me know what you guys think about this idea. Uh, if you guys are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. <laughs> My pre-workout's kicking in. Peace. <laughs> hmm.